Musicians losing their grasp on reality due to fame and fortune is a story we've all heard before. This is an inside look at KISS, a rock band that reached epic new heights of success. We're talking about a level of success so monumental, only a small number of performers had experienced it before them. But then, the usual traps of stardom had sprung. Easy women, copious amounts of drugs and alcohol, and the endless pursuit of more money. This is the story of the little known movie that along with two other contributing factors would bring an end to what could have been rock music's first billion dollar empire. Who could have imagined that only five years, almost to the day of recording their first album, the brilliant legacy the band was building was about to start falling apart. Going into the year 1978, the band had released three consecutive platinum albums and were packing entire stadiums to maximum capacity. The year before saw the release of the Love Gun album, which claimed the highest position on the record charts for KISS so far into their careers. With a wave of success such as this, it's easy to understand how the band would come to think they could do no wrong. So the group decided to swipe an idea from another band of their time, that would be Yes, and release a series of solo albums by each member of KISS. The plan sounded great on paper. Almost immediately after the release, however, critics and fans alike voiced their discontent for the solo album. And then, the month following the release of the solo albums would see the release of the movie KISS initially thought would take their brand and legacy to levels of success the entertainment industry had never seen. KISS Meets The Phantom of the Park was released on October 28th, 1978. The band quickly realized production hadn't gone exactly as planned during a pre-release party and were instantly disgusted with the way they were characterized in the film. Ace Freely would go on to reveal that throughout most of the movie's shoot, he and Peter Criss were constantly abusing drugs and alcohol. This substance abuse saw the pair constantly showing up late for shooting and leaving the set early on most days forcing producers to use their stunt doubles to finish scenes. Peter and Ace's behavior was far from the only problem. The movie's plot was disappointingly simplistic, leaving very little to the imagination. The band was also set up for failure with the movie's script, which was hastily written and featured very poorly written dialogue. He's convinced you did it, but the investigation's a stroke. No gratitude need be voiced. Your mind speaks to us. Then there was Kiss's acting. In the rush to crank out the movie, no one thought it would be a good idea to get the band members some acting lessons. It's Sam. You're looking for someone, but it's not Kiss. Ace's acting proved to be the worst, and he was given the fewest lines possible. We've got to get out of here. Leave it to me, Star Child. I'll bend these beams with my mind. And the voice of Peter Chris's character was performed by a voice actor named Michael Bell since Peter refused to participate in post-production oh. editing. We don't work with a second act, Devro. Besides, Armageddon is a lame group. <laughs> the only time in the movie in which we hear Peter's real voice is when he's singing the song Beth. Bad writing, bad acting, and bad production aside, there was another glaring factor that doomed the Kiss movie from the start. Star Wars debuted the year before and completely redefined special effects in movies. The high standard of George Lucas's work made Kiss's movie look like an absolute joke. It's common knowledge within the music industry that the members of KISS would prohibit staffers from talking about the movie when in their presence. Come 1979, KISS would find a small glimmer of hope for putting the solo albums and the movie behind them with the release of the Dynasty album. However, the next three albums following Dynasty would prove to be the final nail in KISS's coffin. They would never again recapture the same magic that brought them to where they were. In 2024, the band's catalog and intellectual property were sold to Pop House Entertainment Group for $300 million, which definitely isn't chump change. However, when we look at Lucasfilm, which came up in the same time as KISS, selling for $4 billion 10 years earlier, one has to wonder just how much more money the group would have sold for and how much sooner they would have done it if they had approached their brand extension more strategically. Thank you very much for watching and please consider subscribing to the channel.